guys, Dr. Christy Ennis. Today we are going to talk about pain in the back of the knee. So not here so much or here, but right here, that little fleshy part in the back of that knee. You know, if your kid walks up behind you and puts his knees right in the back there and you want to do this kind of thing, you guys have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's the area we're going to talk about today. Now that pain can be caused by several things. Number one is a baker's cyst, and that usually feels kind of squishy or a little hard, honestly like a little, right, little nodule in the back of the knee. The second one that can cause pain back there is a meniscus. Usually with that, you have some other symptoms like pain along the inside or the outside of the leg, uh, the knee kind of locking up on you. And I do have a video on that, which I will link so you can take a peek at that one. And if you're not sure about what's going on in that knee, you can always please check with your doctor first just to make sure. But the ones we're gonna to talk today about that's the most common thing that I tend to see are a few different muscles. The hamstring muscles come up from the hip and then go down and attach below that knee. The calf muscles, which are the gastroc and the soleus, come uh, down below from that Achilles and then attach up above the knee on the back side there too. And then lastly is the popliteus or popliteus muscle, tomato, tomato, whichever one you prefer to say, which is a annoying little muscle right in the back that starts at the outside of the large leg bone and then travels right through the back of that knee space over to insert on that tibia, that lower leg bone. So we're gonna work on all three of those muscles today. All right, the first muscle group we're gonna work on are the calf muscles. Moo, <laughs> couldn't help myself. So even though the pain is behind the knee, like I said, those muscles go all the way down. So you actually may have tightness anywhere along that line, including the Achilles. So I'm gonna grab my Derma Edge, which I will also link for you guys. My invention, patented made in the US, um, and we're gonna do a little bit of an assessment. So you're gonna go on the outside of that lower leg, you're gonna go on the inside, whatever feels bumpiest, and there might be multiple spots like my lovely calves, that's where you're gonna focus. I'm going up right now because it feels bumpiest that way, and I wanna go in the direction of bumpiness. There's the technical term. So this is a great way to get blood flow going in all of those muscles first. And you may find as you're doing this that there are a couple different spots that actually feel tighter than others. You do this until it feels a little looser, a little bit just better overall. Now, with those tight spots, for example, I have one right here. We're gonna take the edge of that derma edge. I'm just gonna straighten my leg out a little bit and then I'm gonna add a little flexion well, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, or just raise the foot, point the foot. You can actually do that with your leg all the way straight out too. It's kind of whatever feels more comfortable for you. Same idea, you're doing this until it feels a little bit better, and then you can go ahead and move on to some other spots. For the inner side, I like to kind of put my leg out like this, and then poke in and do that same foot motion again. So we're using the muscles themselves to actually help lengthen back out again. Okay, second muscles we're working on are those hamstring muscles. Now, very similar concept and technique that we're gonna do. We wanna get that blood flow going first, find those really yucky tight spots, and then try to loosen those tight spots up. So again, almost that same position, and I'm just gonna, oh my goodness, almost everything on me is tight today. Look at that, you guys are so lucky. So again, you can do a little experiment, or I already know that I'm really tight here. So I'm gonna go, again, remember they're starting kind of down here and they actually attach right up towards that butt. So you may need to go up a little bit higher with these. And because it is multiple muscles, right? It's not just one going straight up the back. You do wanna make sure that you check that inside and that outside. So again, once that feels a little bit better to you, you're gonna stop doing that, obviously. And then we're gonna work on doing those releases through those specific tight spots. Okay, to get those tight spots through the back of that hamstring, we're gonna grab our trusty tennis ball. Lacrosse ball also works, but it's a little harder, so you are warned right now it may not be very comfortable. A harder surface is usually a better spot to start with, unless, again, that's too painful, then you can go on something a little cushier and it'll feel a little bit better. But, for example, I have a tight spot right here. Look at that flexibility, though. So I'm gonna sit right on top of that, or my leg is going to sit right on top of that ball, and already that's a little bit like, ooh, okay? But same concept with using the muscle to help it lengthen. We're gonna 
Oh. <laughs> We're hopefully going to straighten that leg all the way out. Make sure that if it hurts to straighten it all the way out, please don't do that, right? You can stop before that. And this one for me probably will take a little bit longer, but same concept in that you want to do it until you go, oh, hey, there's a tennis ball there? Hmm, didn't know it. No, that probably won't be the case, but stop when it starts to feel a little bit better. The last muscle we're going to work on is that popliteus. This little booger of a muscle can really get annoying. Now, remember I said it goes right through behind that fleshy part of the knee, right? That's the bulk of the muscle. But a lot of times I try to avoid working directly behind there and smooshing something right into the back of that leg because you have a lot of nerves and blood vessels back there that generally don't like to be smushed. And you'll definitely know if you're smushing them because it'll feel numb, tingly, and just not good. If it feels okay for you and you've done a technique that works for you, by all means, go ahead and do so. But sometimes you can actually just get it by releasing those calf muscles. But what I like to do is actually go into more of, so this is kind of where we're talking about an attachment site. So if I kind of come inwards, I'm going towards the back of that fleshy knee, fleshy knee part, and then, but I'm going to the side of it a little bit so that I'm avoiding some of those structures. And then once you find that spot, and you'll know, you're gonna do a little rotation now with that foot back and forth. Okay, so that's the outside one. The inside one, same kind of concept. We're gonna kind of drop into that leg. Oh, yep, <laughs> that's the spot. I'm gonna come back to the middle there and then add that rotation in again until it feels a little less blah. Now that we've loosened up all those structures, you should be feeling a little bit better. Now, the other important portion of this is strengthening. So more often than not, those muscles in the back of the leg that we just talked about tend to be weaker than the muscles in the front of the leg. What also plays a role are those gloop, gloop, <laughs> gloop muscles because they help support the pelvis and avoid that in and out motion, which again puts stress on the knee and makes other muscles have to work real hard. So we're gonna go over a couple exercises in this video, and then I'll link some other ones for you guys that go over more of this stuff as well. So exercise number one is a single leg deadlift or a drinking bird. That's the other name I use for it. It's going to work on strengthening these muscles while also lengthening down here at the same time. So you kind of get a double whammy. One of the reasons it's my favorite. Hang on to something if you need to for balance, but we're gonna go standing on this left leg is the leg that's gonna be working. This right leg will raise up, but only because this left leg is hinging backwards. So there's a slight bend in the knee and I'm taking and pressing those hips back and I'm gonna use this a little bit for balance. And now I'm engaging in through all those muscles. Make sure you stand up nice and tall and get that little pelvic tuck to get those glute muscles a little bit more. If that's just too much, you can go ahead and put that back foot down and you can still have that same concept where I'm pushing that hip back, but I'm using a little bit of something extra there to help out besides just hanging on to something. If it's too easy, go ahead and grab some weights and shoot for 10 to 15 reps of this. Our second exercise today is going to be targeting those glute muscles. So glute medius and minimus, as well as that glute maximus. For this one, it works the best, I think, when you use a band. You certainly don't have to, but you get a little more resistance with this. We are gonna be lying down, so you can clearly do this on the floor like I am, or if that's uncomfortable, you can do it right in bed, as long as you don't disturb anybody that's lying next to you. So this band is gonna go above the knees, it does not match, I know. We're gonna lie right on down. I'm gonna keep a little resistance in the band with my foot position out a tiny bit, just that's the starting position. A little pelvic tuck. I'm gonna lift my butt up towards that ceiling, engaging right through the back of those glute muscles. And then with this, I'm now gonna add a little pull out with that band so I'm getting in through those side glute muscles and come back in. And then you lower back down. So you do wanna come down and up with each repetition just to get a little bit more oomph in there. And so for this one, usually 15 to 20 feels good and like you got some work done. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. If you want to get rid of pain anywhere in your body on your own with just one little portable device, don't forget to check out the Derma Edge. I created this while I was going through Lyme disease to help get rid of my pain on my own nice and gently. 
It's patented and made in the US, actually right down the road in Laconia from where my office is. So don't forget, you can click the link here or in the description to order your own.